a warm good evening everybody i cordially welcome you all to this revamped session of write with us write with us is a literary group that was created in the year 2020 our aim is to provide a supportive platform for storytellers writers and authors to put forth their creative ideas and turn them into interesting stories novels poems quotes and so on we are a strong family of more than 100 members spanning across six countries so far we have conducted two literature festivals first in the year 2020 in the month of august second very recently in the month of august 2021 we had eminent authors eminent publishers and eminent people from the film world joining us for example we had dr manjuri prabhu we had indranil mukherji we had ketan bhagat and so on we will continue to conduct such interesting literature festivals even in the future today we have a panel discussion centered around the topic of social media the interesting discussion centers around if social media is a boon or a bane for writers research shows that 84% of authors use facebook for promoting their work and when it comes to twitter 74% of them are on uh, twitter while 66% of authors use blogging to promote their work but the question is is it really beneficial or is it distracting let's find out from our esteemed panelists today we have two panelists today and let me start introducing them one by one and before that let me also share my screen firstly we have the panelist number 1 haritosh srivastav haritosh is an it project manager with 14 years of industry experience he hails from a small town jaunpur in the state of uttar pradesh he is currently working with tcs and is deputed to basic stock in the uk serving a top pharma customer he loves to mentor and coach young professionals and students in their endeavors making their journey better and beautiful he is also a distinguished toastmaster a feat only 1% of toastmasters around the world achieve he is a passionate storyteller and award winning speaker having won accolades in india us and uk he loves volunteering and giving back to the community he is also a youtuber and through his channel keeps bringing new captivating and inspiring content including inspirational interviews book reviews and blogs he also runs a interesting podcast by name small town bigger dream and in june 2021 he published his first ebook small town bigger dream that you can see on the screen in amazon kindle and it was among top 12 best seller for 3 days in amazon and i must confess that i too have read this book and i'm like halfway through the book and i really loved all the interesting lessons that i've learned so far and it's worth emulating he loves to mentor and coach young students and professional let's welcome haritosh to the panel discussion thank you so much devi looking forward to this discussion thank you haritosh and our next panelist is anil jalali now to introduce anil jalali he has had a varied experience in the corporate world with more than 25 years experience in sales and marketing and operations in 
telecom companies like tata tele services bharti tata auto components etc anil jalali has been writing since his childhood mainly poems and short stories the writings are mostly related to finer aspects of human existence and questions related to self enquiry these questions help us in our quest for self development both internally and externally he is also a regular blogger and you can catch up on his blogs at the website justgrowth.co.in currently he is utilizing his corporate experience and learnings as a professional trainer on sales and life skills his hobbies and interests apart from writing are reading books storytelling working with children for their holistic development and spirituality he is also an avid toastmaster and till very recently was vp education at noida toastmasters club we are so glad to have you here so welcome to the panel discussion so before starting this discussion i would like to now first elaborate on what the format of this discussion is going to be the panel discussion will take a different approach henceforth here we'll be having four rounds in this panel discussion i will not reveal all the rounds at present let it be a surprise to all our panelists as well as the audience who has joined through facebook and audience who has joined us through facebook don't worry there's a surprise waiting for you as well just make sure that you follow this discussion throughout and in between you will get chance to interact with the panelists chance to interact with me as the moderator and there are some surprises waiting for you so all of you are you ready to start off with the discussion panelists are you ready so yes let's begin, let's begin this discussion on social media so this first round is called initial thoughts so let's get some initial thoughts from our panelists coming to our panelist number 1 harishtosh srivastav harishtosh what is your view on the topic panel discussion topic do you think social media is a boon or is it a bane your take on it thank you devi first of all for inviting me now this is a very interesting topic social media boon or bane and if i have to tell you i think it depends on how you take it if you become a consumer of it if you instead of writing instead of doing your work instead of practicing if you're consuming social media's unlimited un untimely scrolls that definitely it is a pain <laughs> but if you're reaching using social media to reach out to audiences which you might have not reached out to you might have re- not reached out to the other parts of the world other continents then it is definitely a boon so it depends on how you use it it, it it's like the classical question right <laughs> yeah right. is eating fruit good or bad i mean if you eat it even eating fruit a lot can actually be bad because it can increase your sugar level so it, it it's all about the balance very very well put uh, haritosh it's about how constructively you use social media that matters the most very well put now moving on to the second panelist sir uh, anil sir your take on what do you think social media is a boon or is it a bane uh, thank you devi for having me on the show uh, really a pleasure uh, first i would like to start with a small quote by francis bacon he says that money is a bad master but it's a good servant the same goes for social media also it is a bad master a very very bad master but it's a good servant so how you utilize that according to your convenience and what you want out of it is something that not only writers but everybody has to learn there are so many advantages and so many disadvantages now getting to two more issues which i wanted to put across one is that there is a discussion which has been happening for so long that is there life after death this discussion has been going on for quite a long time 
I found the answer. Yes, there's life after death. And it's on social media. And it's true for <laughs> writers also. Absolutely true for writers. Even if you die, even there's a small person from a small city, he will continue to be remembered on social media. Now think of life as an ocean, okay? And social media as a waves. Without a waves, the sea is not there, the ocean is not there. Waves define the ocean and the sea. Now, if the waves get too high and prove an impediment to people and harm the people, then it is it is a part of the waves. But if they are sailing smoothly, the waves are smooth, then you can go across the ocean. But if they go too high and if they prove an impediment to you, then they become uh, they injure you. So that is what is social media. Since I'm a storyteller, I thought it better to give, I think, in images and stories. So I thought it better to put it across this way. So those are my initial viewpoints on the on the subject. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anil, sir. My takeaway would be life after death is on social media. So everybody note that you're not going to heaven. You're not going to hell. You will land up in social media. Very well put humorously, sir. But now coming to the next question to panelist number one, Haritosh, uh, you recently published your book, Small Town Big Dreams. How did social media help you in promotion of the book? Like which all social media channels did you utilize? So I would like to know that story. Okay. Yeah, I, I might seem like a generalist here. <laughs> so I did not... Uh do injustice to any social media that I do, which means that I publicize it anywhere and everywhere. Uh, being the first time author, I think it's very important. Uh, it was very important for me to reach out to different audiences. Uh, so even though Facebook is one of the ones, I started using Instagram a few days. Uh, I mean, a few months before, if I say, uh, was not a big Instagram guy before that. So I even use Instagram. I used uh, I do YouTube, so YouTube was one of them, and then podcast, all of that. So at the end of the day, what is the purpose of social media? If you are thinking in uh, in the perspective of a writer or a creator, is to reach out to your audience. And, and there might be different tools and uh, different strategies that you use based on the social media. But no, and, and I was just reading an article that you know, there are authors we, which use particular social media. For example, J.K. Rowling. She uses Twitter a lot and uh, not any other social, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, authors like Robin Sharma, Kendra Hall. Uh, they use Instagram as much as anything else. I mean, they don't mu use much of you know, Twitter or Facebook. So it depends on person to person. For me personally, I used all of them. I, I did not differentiate meaning any. <laughs> so I went on Twitter. I tweeted. I went on Instagram, put some posts, and then put it on YouTube, podcast, Facebook and to my email uh, list as well yeah that's a, that's a very interesting take as a first step author yes it's necessary to build that credibility it's ne necessary to build that online presence and so go out there grab whatever social media platform you get and start engaging with your audience thanks for sharing that uh, story haritosh now coming to our next panelist anil sir Sir, you two released a book recently. So did you make use of major social media platforms like a Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter? How was your journey like? Yeah. So let me go a little back, take a step back. Uh, mm -hmm. Social media has a lot to do with the personality of the person also. Mm -hmm. uh, I am an introvert type of a person. So uh, telling my story, uh, it was very difficult for me to actually start using the social media because you start putting a part of yourself and maybe the whole of yourself onto the social media. So it took me a lot of time to actually internalize the fact that you have to start mm. using the social media. So uh, I was not a very good, I was not using Facebook. So I started using Facebook. I started using LinkedIn and promoting my book on that, which has mm. given me a good response. Mm. People have come to know because this was the first time that I was doing it. The effect has been that people have got to know. The point in social media is, uh, which many people are doing, and I must congratulate Haritosh that he has been doing it very well. I'm learning mm -hmm. a lot from him, that you have to be consistent in the approach of handling the social media handle. Mm -hmm. 
okay mm -hmm. you can't just be on one day and off the other day you have to do it consistently okay. over a period of time mm -hmm. plus there's a second thing that you need to do you need to put out a message that correlates with what you are trying to say for example mm -hmm. one day you put one message on one handle and second day you put another type of message on the same handle and a third type of message on the third hand so that wouldn't <laughs> work so you have to be consistent and focused in your approach that what do you want from social media when your focus is very clear you are very clear on what you want then mm -hmm. it becomes very much efficient but coming back to what i have been i have started using it and i'm getting a good response people are uh, uh, seeing it i am at least uh, i get the satisfaction that people who know me know that i have published a book so that's the first step then the second step would be to get to people who don't know me third step would be to have a wider audience fourth step maybe uh, a commercialization of the whole affair where people mm -hmm. start reading the book so it is a process that you go through one two three four mm -hmm. i am a baby night now taking baby baby steps okay i have a long 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 way to go and mm -hmm. i'm looking to aritosh and uh, seeing how he goes about i am learning with him on the way thank you yeah thank you thank you for uh, sharing that frank story sir and that's how we all learn by taking baby okay. steps and being consistent on social media thank you both for sharing your views now it brings me to my third question one author zadie smith she does not use social media she says that by avoiding twitter and instagram it protects her right to be wrong i'll phrase it again it protects her right to be wrong so what is your take on this uh, haritosh do you agree with her or what do you have to say about this that's a very interesting quote uh, and i would think about it, it it's more like uh, we would have heard a lot of twitter wars and facebook ah. discussion whatsapp university it might be alluding to that but i think uh, at times you have to be there as a genuine person which means that you have to accept that whatever is your viewpoint may not be other person's viewpoint whatever i'm saying is my viewpoint and i'm fine but devi might not uh, understand or agree to that and if you are able to uh, get that in your mind that not everything that you go and put it out there people will take it as it is some people might get back to you some people might uh, oppose to your viewpoint and that that's okay and even in our life uh, you will not meet everybody uh, who will agree to all the things that you do if that happens probably you're not in Uh, earth you're probably in heaven or some other world uh, and this is exactly the reflection so it says social media which is sort of a reflection of society now i know things get a little bit uh, blown up when we talk about social media because you don't have those controls and things things mm -hmm. may tend to go a bit longer and and things like that but having said that at the end of the day you have to accept that and not everybody will uh, agree and accept your point of view and there might be times that you no know, Uh, it may backfire uh, so you can choose whether you want to go out there and put your perspective still knowing there might be backlashes or you want to keep it out of it and you want to have your sanctity uh, it's it's uh, at the end of the day i think it's a personal choice mm -hmm. thank you thank you haritosh it's it's a personal choice how you want to be part of the discussion your inputs on this uh, anil sir yeah. what do you have to say about this yeah. so i was just thinking uh, uh, a correlation or an analogy mm -hmm. i think if you have to be on social media you have to be like a crocodile <laughs> so how, what does a crocodile have there are two basic things of a crocodile one it is very thick skinned very very mm. thick skinned mm. second thing is when it has had its full eating it goes and rest on the shore having the sun okay so Uh, when you go into social media there will be good as well as bad coming out of it you have to mm. be such th thick skin that it doesn't get yes. to you to your heart it doesn't get to you second is once you have put up your post and you have put it out go and rest in the sunshine and don't think too much about what the uh, uh, what the quotes or what the what people say about it you can mm. take the good but you remain as far away from the bad as possible as i said before it's a good uh, servant but it's a bad master it is how you utilize and use it 
it mm. should not get to you personally mm. you see there are so many people in the world 7.9 billion people so if a successful successful big person comes on social media who have got so many followers millions of followers if they start looking at all the tweets or all the responses that they'll go mad thinking about what people think about people will have their own idea based mm. on their demographics based on their culture based on uh, whether they had a fight with their partner based upon mm. uh, uh, the boss yelling at them they'll take it out sometime sometime or the other and you will be the cul- you will get it from them so mm. you have to consider that, take that in, into consideration that if you are satisfied with what you have done mm. it doesn't harm anybody it is good and you feel it right from the heart then who bothers let them do what they do but your your message has to go out that is very important because mm. there are people out there who understand you who will get the message who will those people whom you will touch by your heart there are those people so we need to go out for them yeah yeah very very well put very well put sir you should not shy away from putting out your message and you should be thick skinned like a crocodile thank you thank you for sharing the views sir now we have come to the end of the first round of discussion let's give it up for the panelists it was a very very informative round and we learned a lot now we have something in store for the audience who has joined us on facebook now we have a question for the audience let me share my screen for that can the audience identify this author you can put it on the chat window on facebook comment section you can put it i'll give three clues one he is an american author two he is called the king of horror three he writes more than horror stories crime fantasy fiction lot lot many lot many journals to his name and he is a very famous american author known as the king of horror anybody panelists can also go for it i'm sorry that seems to be a very difficult one absolutely <laughs> I, I was thinking maybe i need to shed the crocodile tear now <laughs> <laughs> okay i, I may not like... i may not be able to uh, recognize my uh, picture from my childhood so it is a <laughs> <laughs> okay let me let me reveal it maybe i'll get a much easier easier author next time so it is none other than stephen king the king of horror oh. thank you thank you everybody for at least trying trying to guess so now let's start off with the round 2 of this panel discussion that is spin the wheel in the spin the wheel session i will not be picking up the question my spinning wheel will do it for me so there are some uh, questions in that and whichever comes by luck or by chance the panelists will be answering those questions let me again share my screen so you can see the wheel option i am going to spin it now and the question for the panelists is social media presence is it guaranteed book sale what do you all think social media presence does it mean guaranteed book sale 
So I will ask one of the panelists to go for this first. Haritosh, you want to go for it? Sure, sure. Uh, if you are trying to sell a T-shirt and you put it on social media, is there a guarantee that the T-shirt will sell? No. And same is the same is the case with a book. It's at the end of the day, your book should have something that the reader is going to look forward to. Uh, if there is nothing, uh, regardless of how much advertisement you do, you do uh, free advertisement, paid advertisement. If there is no content in there, there's there's nothing in there. There's no reviews you're getting. I don't think it's going to sell. So it, it's going to promote you. It's going to let you reach out to a wider audience. But uh, if they see and there's, there's no substance, I don't think it's going to convert into sales. Yes, yes, that's that's very well put. It's all about substance in the book. Over to you, Anil, sir. What's your take on this? Yeah, it's like uh, a student who has not studied the full year saying that I will <laughs> go and give the exam. I should be guaranteed that I will pass. It doesn't happen that way. It should not also happen that way because quality yeah. has to be differentiated and more so in social media because by word of mouth or by high pitched marketing, you might get some sales, but those won't be long lived. So it doesn't guarantee anything. It only guarantees that you give so many clicks that you reach a wider, wider audience and people see and know you. After that, it is the content. Content mm -hmm. is the king and mm -hmm. will become a bigger king, become an emperor as we move forward. If content is right, appeals to the audience, your book or whatever you say will be sold out. If it doesn't appeal to you, so you've got so many examples. You say you uh, see Harry Potter, the way it has sold and become such a big name. So it has appealed to something, something in the reader, in the viewer. It has appealed somewhere. We don't know what it is. That's why there are so few. But once it appeals, then you can sit back and relax like a crocodile. Yeah, and, and just to add to what uh, yeah. Anisar was saying, I think uh, it can actually derail your sales. So, for example, mm -hmm. when you go and check in Amazon something, you first thing I at least I do is look at what are the bad reviews. And if you start getting a lot of bad reviews about the book, this is guaranteed that you buy book might not get no the sale that you're expecting. But whether it will convert to sale, it's a question. It will depend on so many factors, including mm -hmm. the good reviews and the content and the publicity. But mm -hmm. it's not the only factor, but it can be the only factor to stop your sale or growth. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very well put by the panelists. So my takeaway here is yes, content is the king and good reviews do matter now let's see what the spinning wheel has as our next question so let me start spinning again so the question is social media organic followers or paid followers what works well so once again, let me repeat the question. Social media, is it organic followers work well or paid followers? So let's learn the views of the panelists. Over to you, Haritosh. Yeah, I think this question should have been to somebody who has actually tried paid followers. If I would have tried, I would have got so many followers. But uh, what I know is that most of the time, these are bots. Uh, and you want to have human followers, right? You want to have a human connection. So you might buy followers, but whether those followers will result into something substantial is still a question that we are still figuring out in this information technology age. Uh, we are looking, we all of us are, I think, looking for a real human connection. And uh, mm. I know I get requests all, on, on different social media that, you no, know, you pay me this much money and we can get you. 100,000 followers, 10,000 followers. But uh, is that worth it? In my opinion, probably not. Uh, if you grow organically, if you are able to uh, spread your message throughout the world in the way that it is supposed to be, it was meant to be, that's when you will be able to see uh, the result that you're expecting. Otherwise, 
Yeah, buying is never. It's, it's like cheating with the system. Yeah, buying is like cheating with the system. That's what Haritosh says. Let let's listen from Anil sir what he has to say. So I'd like to compare it with a student uh, who goes into say Vartan, okay, by his good percentage or passing through the exams. And second one would go based on the donation his father has given to water. Hmm. Both are the ways. It really depends upon how you want to go. Okay, We can't negate the fact that social media presence and social media followers, whether by organic or inorganic means, have had a tremendous effect. Okay, If hmm. you look at the US elections, the way they were handled, okay, uh, whether they would have happened inorganically because there were so many bots which were creating followers and the effect. So it really depends upon the writer which way does he want to go. But mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, a person who is true to his heart and wants to put out a message based on what he thinks and doesn't want to just earn money. There, there are two parts of it, actually. You just want to earn money, become famous, or you want to put out a message. Okay, mm. If you want to put out a message and you want what you're thinking, what you want others to know, then maybe it's a good way to go about uh, the organic way. But if you mm. just are there, there are both types of people. If you just want to earn money and become famous, maybe it's for those people. For me, it works organically. Uh, hmm. The paid part is not for me, uh, as it is, I don't have that much of money to spend on these uh, sort of things. But hmm. we can't negate the effect that both types of people are there. And hmm. people day in and day out start getting followers and like that. And then they put it up to the marketers that I have got so many followers. And based on this, you give me a good rating. So hmm. a, till the time it is not uh, against the law. People can do that according to their own convenience mm -hmm. and according to what their heart tells them. So mm -hmm. that's my view. That's 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 a very interesting stand. So both our panelists are pro uh, organic following, and they feel that the message should matter the most rather than just buying the followers. Thanks for putting those uh, views. Now let's go back to the spinning wheel and let's see what it has in store for us. Now, let me start spinning again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. Okay, it seems <laughs> it does want us to pay for social media. <laughs> You might want to <laughs> click on the remove. <laughs> let me let me start again. Uh, not again, the same thing. <laughs> I just hope not yeah. the same thing again. Yeah, we have another winner. Do you believe that audience engagement can go down if you take a break from social media? So the question for the panelists is: Do you believe that audience engagement can go down if you take a break? from social media. So over to you, Haritosh, first. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. I, I don't know, We ha do we have a matrix for that? I know in YouTube, you have a matrix for audience engagement. But if I have to think about it, uh, I know a lot of uh, authors, uh, they go on a retreat, they go on vacation, and they mention mm -hmm. that. Uh, for example, Robin Sharma, when he was writing uh -huh. his last book, he said, I am going out for uh, two, uh, two months to an uh, island. I will not have access to the island and you will not see me. Uh, but I will be doing some creative work. So if you are clear and honest to your audience, I don't think it will affect that. No, you have to come down uh, five times live in a day or in a week. Uh, what they want is, are you able to provide value to our audience as and when you come? Uh, having said that, Again, there is a caveat. If you never come back to your social media while well, your audience is expecting, uh, that may actually that may disengage them. So it's, I think it's a fine balance. And whatever you do, if you keep your audience, uh, your followers, uh, people that you want to connect, if you keep them informed that no, I may not be available for next few weeks or mm -hmm. next few months. I think that may still keep the engagement. Otherwise, 
definitely if they are coming back to you looking out some more content and if they are not getting that it may uh, yeah it may lower your engagement engagement yes yes that's uh, that's uh, rightly put you need to keep your audience engaged when they can expect a message from you or update from you your takes on take on this anil sir yeah uh, i'd like to think it that there are two major or big categories of people uh, for whom we can uh, bifurcate this question one would be the people for example i'd give an example uh, say if uh, uh, amir khan makes movies every two or three years okay mm-hmm. so people wait for those movies because they know that the content the way he is putting across the story everything is absolutely top class and people wait and maybe that increases the value also that could mm-hmm. be a marketing technique also that it uh-huh. builds up the expectations to such a level that people say yes we have to go and watch the same mm-hmm. is true for the writers also uh, as uh, haritor said that robin sharma if he comes after even 2 years or 1 year the expectations would build up to such an extent that you will go because you know the content is the king and people would like to hear or read mm-hmm. the content but for newbies who are new and want to put their voice across more often i think helps because till the time you reach that level obviously there has to be a constant engagement with the audience mm-hmm. because if there is not constant engagement with how will the people know recognize you and see what you are there for what is your view point what you are putting across so mm. as i said two categories the people who are new need to be constantly engaged so if you uh, for four four months you are off social media i for example uh, uh, people would absolutely uh, not feel that i have gone off and would not mm. there would not be expectation for other people there would be an expectation so this is how i would like to answer the question yeah that's uh, that's again very true you need to keep your engagement level high especially if you are a newbie and that's one one of the best way to build up that direct connect with the audience thanks thanks for putting it across sir now let's trouble our spinning wheel for one last time <laughs> let's take its input so let me share the screen again so let's start spinning again i hope it's not a repetitive question yeah so it's an interesting question has social media criticism ever impacted your mental health so the question is has social media criticism ever impacted your mental health this time i'll come to anil sir first have your take on this sir yeah uh, because uh, i would not be the right person to answer this question because i am not so famous that i get negative remarks or negative <laughs> content okay all uh, all that i have got is positive remarks because those people who know me have commented so people have not commented but uh, it's very easy to say that uh, that you don't get affected by it and to, the extent depends upon your own personality also how you take mm-hmm. it you get affected but how much you get affected is something depending upon the personality of the person and mm-hmm. there have been reports obviously there have been reports that people based on social media uh, responses that they have got uh, have done something unimaginable so there are people like that so it really depends upon the person but i am still to get that uh, if I, when i am famous that when i get those types of <laughs> remarks maybe then i will be in a better position to uh, answer this question <laughs> yes very very frankly put sir i like your frankness yes uh, so i come to haritosh now what what do you think i will phrase it in a different way as well so social media is it distracting too much distracting rather than doing the work at hand you are just ending up commenting or ending up engaging or that work can be put in writing or editing your work so and again has it really affected your mental health getting you know unwanted comments or not so encouraging feedback yeah i mean i would love to say no uh, but the answer if i if i am being honest is yes uh, and it's it's with any social media if you are a content creator or if you are a creator writer and if you put out something there at times you will get criticism some people will put uh, uh, very harsh comments and you may take it to your heart as well 
uh, i think the question then becomes how long do you take it to your heart i mean mm-hmm. you if somebody start uh, and like anil sir i'm also not very famous that i get lot of abusive comments <laughs> or anything but if somebody even even if somebody doesn't uh, completely uh, resonate with what opinion you put in you also tend to think whether i am right or i am wrong so you get, tend to get into that self judgment mode and also uh, sometimes you take it too seriously i think the key here is that you, know, you have to understand at the end of the day it's just a social media and it's mm. it's still not the real world uh, so you yeah. be there you feel it that okay i i am feeling depressed i am feeling bad you might want to reach out to your family and friends to discuss that situation because what i found is that you no know, if you have something big happening in social media if you discuss this with real people i think you will find out it's it's at the end of the day, it's it's sort of a facade if i may say yeah. uh, and and you have real connection that you can go back to so right uh, right it does affect uh, and like anil sir said i have seen uh, people at the pinnacle of their career that they also get mm-hmm. affected uh one of the reasons that amir khan quit people say speculate i am not saying that people speculate that there were lot of criticism that was coming on his post uh so it might be a reason he quit uh, so that and there are people who have taken drastic drastic step because of the criticism on social media mm. beat any platform uh but the key i think is remember that you might feel bad but you have to take a step back and say okay let this is affecting me now let me move on to some other things yes 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 very very well put you should not take things to heart just move on take what is necessary we have an audience question coming in now that uh, uh, there was a discussion on how amir khan does two movies in a year and then that marketing strategy and he get good reviews the audience member has asked what about akshay kumar we see his movies every quarter and still his movies have good content and also he gets good reviews too what about uh, this so any of you want to give a take on this yeah so uh... Uh, maybe i can go on that because uh, yeah. i had quoted the example of amir khan yeah. so you know uh, in a population of 1.39 billion people that is india you will find all type of people you will find mm-hmm. all type of things okay there is a market for a category b category c category mm-hmm. i am not saying b is better than b is less uh, than a or c is less than b i'm just categorizing them okay the type of content that he puts across akshay kumar maybe the type of content people want to see over and over again okay mm. and maybe the type of content that amir khan puts across if it comes after 2 years uh, people want to see more and not to uh, i think i should mention it here that the amount of business that an amir khan movie does a single movie does is huge Mm. Uh, you can't compare it with the akshay kumar movies that is there so there are different type of people different type of things happening in a population of 1.39 billion which is many countries uh, included in india you have got all types of people so it really right. depends upon so for mm. marketing strategies also you have got different what suits mm. for a doesn't suit for e doesn't suit for c mm. so you have got your own things happening so you can't have uh, one thing works for all okay so mm-hmm. place is there for everybody and anybody mm-hmm. that's that's very well put there i i like to add something yeah. to that i think that's a very yes, interesting yes. point that no yeah. anil has said and one more thing that we need to remember is uh, marketing for these movie star or for any content creator which are at level is not a sole responsibility of the star itself they have big teams and we all work in teams right so even though they are working on multiple movies at that time the his job is to get there and shoot and then when they call for the schedule for promotion and all but there is a big team who is editing who is producing who is marketing mm-hmm. teasing uh, doing all sort of things so having a team and if you can afford to have such a team every every film is a different unit and all of them are working towards that so it can happen that now you can work like for if i take that analogy to a uh, creator you might be hypothetically be able to work on multiple creations as well you might be working mm-hmm. on a non fiction you might be working on anthology and you might also be looking at novel now sometime it may not be practical but uh, there are things still you can couple and work collaborate on so having a team i think also helps him and other mm-hmm. uh, 
movie players as in in the web series world there are so many web series coming up with season 2 3 and all and they do super marketing uh, because they have a dedicated marketing team mm-hmm. so i think that also adds i mean eases his pressure yes 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 that's that's again very well put uh, anil sir how he mentioned about there are different strategies work for different type of movies a grade b grade and uh, like haitosh said yes the team work plays a major role yes i think that would have answered the question of the audience member so here we come to the end of round 2 and let's give it for our panelists that was a very interesting discussion now as promised we have a question for the audience and i am just putting it in the chat window so that all the audience member can see it so i want the audience to tell me what is the full name of pg woodhouse can you expand the initial of pg woodhouse in that what p stands for and what g stands for you can type in your answer in the chat window what does p and g stand for in the name of pg woodhouse a famous author let's wait for the answers okay Okay, even the panelists can go for it. Any of you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm very bad at remembering the full form of names, especially father's <laughs> name. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's that's okay. Anil sir, you want to go for it? No, I really don't know about this. Okay, <laughs> let me let me give him the answer. It's Pelham Grenville. It's Pen Pelham Grenville Woodhouse. Pelham Grenville. We usually know these authors by their just initials, and we are so much used to the uh, initials that we don't even Google or we don't even try to know their full name. Yes, we have got finally an audience um, answer as Pelham Grenville. Well done to the audience member who answered it. Now let's move on to the third round of this panel discussion, and that's called the role play round. So let me tell you how we'll have this role play. In this round, we'll discuss the pros and cons of different social media platforms, starting with Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Any one panelist will be a famous author, and you can choose who, which author you want to be. Another panelist will be the fan of that author. That author. The conversation should center around the author is saying that. i am successful on social media and i'm very happy about my presence on social media the fan tries to convince the audience saying no you are not as you think you should spend more time in writing and he should highlight the con the author should highlight the pro the fan will highlight the con you will start with facebook and when i say linkedin twitter you will switch over to the other platform so i hope the rules are clear yeah Yep. Yes. So, who wants to be the famous author? I love to be the I, famous. So, I can be the famous author, which I'll so be after some time. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's well put. So, you can choose the author you like. Any any famous author. Okay. 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 <laughs> I like to pick uh, Frederick Forsyth. Okay, Frederick Forsyth. And now uh, Haritosh will be the fan of this author. Let's start the discussion with the author, and author is going to tell why he loves Facebook and why he is successful on Facebook, and the fan will counter. Start off. Can you once again say the name of the author, sir? Frederick Forsyth. Frederick Forsyth. Okay, let's start with Frederick Forsyth. Why do you like Facebook? You know, Facebook, uh, out of a total population uh, of seven point nine billion, Facebook has a pop. Facebook people coming on Facebook pages have got a population of two point seven billion people. So there's a whole reach that I'm getting by being on Facebook. Okay, no other platforms gives me so much reach. and as it is i don't write very technical stuff i write stuff 
which general people want to read. So that's why Facebook is giving me those advantages. Plus, I have seen over a period of three, four years that more people are started reading my books. And this is thanks to Facebook because I've got so much reach. So I will continue being on Facebook and I'll but see. The fan that... doesn't agree to that. Fan yes, sir. doesn't seem to agree to that. Yes, your take. Yes, sir. I, I don't think we, we read your book because of your Facebook reach. We read your book because it's actually very interesting. And and we have heard it through words of mouth. My friend presented me your book and I, I loved it. And and then I presented it to a couple of my friends. So And there was no Facebook involved. Let me be very clear. There was no Facebook involved. We bought a physical book and we spread it. So I don't think it's working. Facebook is working in that sense. I think maybe you should consider coming to our house. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, so I, uh, to some extent, I would agree with you in the sense that obviously there would be people who are not on Facebook who would have heard the name of the book and the content through word of mouth. But I'm talking about the majority of the people. And I have got analytics to show that most of the books... LinkedIn. LinkedIn now. LinkedIn. So Talk these are technical LinkedIn. stuff that I... So that's technical stuff that I'm writing and the platform that is there is for professionals. I want to reach to those professional people because those are the people who will give, if they give a good review or if they like the book, more number of people will come and read my book. They're very good influencers on LinkedIn and I want to reach out to them. I want to increase my reach to those intellectuals, to those corporate people so that I get a wider reach and wider recognition. So now what do the fan has to say? Maybe now again, say I, I, I think, Frederick, you are probably sort of contradicting yourself. Last time we heard you saying you were targeting more of housewives and a lot of people who are unemployed. And now you're saying about professional uh, audience. So it doesn't seem to be, con doesn't seem to contradict. I thought you were looking for laid back people who have more time to go through your thick novels. And you know, your novels are not so easy. It's like 50 pages. You have to spend a considerable time. And the professional people, they are here for 10 minutes and then go away. And then they have another meeting and then conference and then report. How would they get so much time? So are you? do you really think it is the right platform for you? Yeah, That's surely. Right. Because I'll tell you. Yeah. is also on Insta. You can go to Insta. <laughs> so uh, my books have got a huge visual characterization okay the way i write is i characterize the whole picture in my mind and then i start writing so it becomes easier for me to put out the pictures on instagram which people like and as i said before i would get a wider uh, a wider audience and people looking at pictures there is more of a retention power if you put out videos or you put out pictures in Insta, there's more of retention power. So people would like that and would uh, buy my books. I'm sure about that. I mean, yeah, again, Frederick, I have to wear that devil's hat. Uh, you probably, I think you have missed those memes that was made on those pictures. And uh, yeah, as a reputed author, you would not like to have those mean, mean memes or reels made on that, right? You would like to keep your audience sanctity and yeah and let me tell you some of those were really really bad i, I can't even mention that so now why not stick to only writing books and and sending us some of the free books you can counter it frederick go ahead counter it <laughs> you know what uh, who in this world would be there who has not tried different things okay so the life that we get is one and it is <laughs> It is our mission to try each and everything. So what I what if I fail? I would have tried it and failed it. I am an established writer. Okay. I have to try. I know that my books sell. I only need to reach a wider audience. Okay. And I'll try all the social media platforms. Some will work for me, some will not work for me. At least by trying, I'll know what is not working for me. I'll get those analytics that for this book. This is the type of social platform media which suits me. So it will be an advantage for me next time onwards. Sir, I'll give you only for that one line you said that I'll have to try different things because that's what we all are here. Keep trying new things. So yes. thank you. <laughs>
I uh, will close this on a positive note. So the fan and the author have come on the same plane and they're finally agreeing. <coughs> that is such a fun listening to all the cross agreements, disagreements. We'll have more of such. And we have come to the end of this discussion. That is the third round of role play. Let's give it for the panelists. And they did a wonderful job. Now, let's not disappoint the audience. Let me shoot the next question to the audience. Let me read it out as well. Social Network, the 2016 movie, is based on which book? The famous movie, Social Network, is based on which book? I'm waiting for some answers on the Facebook platform. Let's see. I just hope somebody gets it right this time. I'm waiting for answer. So I think I'll make a countdown. Tick, tick, one. Tick, tick, two. Tick, tick, three. Tick, tick, four. Tick, tick, five. Tick, tick, six. Tick, tick, seven. Tick, tick, eight. Tick, tick, nine. Tick, tick. 10. So any of the panelists want to try it out? Yeah, I think I just Googled it. This is the, the accidental billionaire based on the yes. story of Mark Zuckerberg. Very, very well, very well uh, put. Though it Googled it, it's fine. But you were frank. <laughs> so it was that. Yeah, we've got the audience response as well. It's accidental billionaires. Let's give it up for the audience as well. Now, Coming to the last and final round, this is going to be a fun session. This is going to be a rapid fire session. And you can be funny, you can be witty. You have to answer within 10 to 20 seconds. Yes or no answers or maximum one line answer. I will start panelist by panelist. First, let me start with Haritush. Who, in your opinion, is the most underrated author? Aritosh. <laughs> Frank again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, what is your favorite drink? Water, coffee, tea? Uh, depends on the time. Morning coffee, uh, otherwise tea. Wow, wonderful. Summer or winter, best time to write? Uh, winter. I, I don't Why? like summer too much. Why winter? I think there is something in the air and, and you have that, you know, uh, something coming up that helps you to get those creative things. I think with winter, we get too outgoing and, and doesn't help uh, build that yes. creative thing. Yes. Yeah, yes. it might be personal. Yes. <laughs> well put. Which subjects were you worst at in school? Oh, I was worst at arts. You know, that was the only subject. And, and this is public, but yeah, that was the only subject I ever cheated uh -huh. on. <laughs> getting so many confessions in this okay very well and your favorite subject to write on cats or dogs neither i'm not neither. i'm not a animal person i don't hate them but i don't love them either so yeah that's what i get response i get from most of my friends i don't love or hate cats okay very well put again what's something that you do not love doing what something that I do not love doing? Uh, procrastinating, even though I procrastinate at, at times. But yeah, procrastination is one thing I hate. One thing. Have you ever been in love and with whom? Have you ever been in love? Yeah, with so many, so many times with my mother, <laughs> with my family, with my friends, and of course my wife. Wow, very well put again. Are you an, are you an expert or a mediocre writer? I would say I am an evolving writer. Very well, very well. First book you ever read? First book I ever read about oh, that? I don't even remember. I think it was, uh, if I take out the academic books, I think it was uh, Shiv Khera's You Can Win. I think that was one of the first motivational book that I can recall at this point of time. I expected kindergarten's ABC. <laughs> I said, I said, except we removed the academy books. That's why. <laughs> That's good, good. So, 
the final question is current book that you are reading oh current book that i'm reading uh, i've got this uh, book called the big magic that i'm reading uh, i'm going to start reading from tomorrow i just finished uh, the book by malcolm gladwell called uh, what got you here won't get you there yeah. so that's current and i'm really looking forward to robin sharma's the everyday hero that will be launched i think next week yeah yes so let's give it for hari so shrivasta that was Thank very well so handled now let's move on to the next panelist anil sir so what is more taxing for you to write a love story or to be in love obviously to be in love that's much more wow. taxing <laughs> yes love is a battlefield indeed <laughs> yes best writing advice you ever got don't try to use so many difficult words yes reading or writing excites you depends upon how you feel emotionally at that point of time writing or are... editing writing any time editing or rewriting mm editing i think editing okay yeah you want to use social media to get published or first publish your book and then make use of social media first publish and then make use of social media well well put on a scale of 1 to 10 how active are you on social media one what okay i think maybe future you will see a ramp up on that texting or talking texting texting okay what are you, what is one hidden talent that you have we all would love to know that i sing and i sing so oh. bad that nobody wants to hear that's a hidden okay talent. bathroom singer <laughs> Maybe one day we will have a bonus uh, singing session of yours here at Right with us. We'll we'll schedule one. One thing that will satisfy your social media ego. Oh, getting the top authors saying, "Oh, you have written wonderful. You have written a wonderful book." Wow! Wow! Any big author that... if says that, yes, my day will be made. wow that's that's also one of my you know wish and the last question instant if you have to be an instant expert at something what will it be advice instant advice okay instant advice very very well handled all the questions let's give it up for anil sir so here we come to the end of this interesting group panel discussion we had four rounds of discussion and all the questions were very well handled by the panelists i got to learn a lot from the panelists a lot of input both of them are published authors and i'm sure their experience their expertise it will help us also to learn something new and help us to grow thank i would like to thank both the panelists haritosh and anil sir for pitching in their ideas their inputs and having uh, you know sportively taken up that role play and sportively and you know wittily answering those questions as well and also i would like to thank the audience members for responding answering the questions and also posting up your comments thank you so much everyone for joining and making this an interesting panel discussion so what take away i have here is social media is something which the writers can make take make use of take advantage of it how you use the social media makes all the difference you should control how you use the um, social media platform so social media platform should not control you unnecessary scrolling that will be a time waste unnecessary engagement is definitely a time waste if you are using it for constructive discussion sharing ideas about your book giving some tips it will definitely be useful so make wise use of social media if you are an author and let's end this discussion here and in the future we'll be back with another interesting discussion topic and another interesting set of uh, panelists thank you so much everybody for joining
thank you so much everybody until then until seeing you next time it's bye from me devi and it's also a wrap from the panelists thank you so thank much you. everybody thank you so thank much thank you david so for having me learned a thank lot you. thank you thank, thank you, you.